just, uh, I'm family here um, in VOSD. And um, I believe it was probably around, probably 10 years ago, I began to come out here, um, invited by, by some of the ministers that were here to come on out and uh, start connecting. And, you know, um, as I began to do that, I personally began to grow. Um, my church began to grow. And um, my life got a whole lot better, man, when I began to connect my life here to VOSD. And so um, Angelica and I, from, from Friday night, we've been so blessed to be here. And we're here, number one, just to grow. We want to grow. Someone told me, and I know you've heard it a hundred times, is uh, growing churches are led by growing leaders. And so we take that personally. So we came out here Friday, and just this whole entire weekend, you know, has just been real, real, real tremendous. So for me to be here with you tonight, I'm not going to be that long. I know it's, for those of us from San Diego, we've been... We've been on the grind probably for like the last two months. Uh, but tonight, I want to do my best to kind of put the, I guess, the icing on the cake. Like a little cherry on top. A little dessert. However you want to say it tonight. Um, but I really feel that we want to solidify everything that happened this weekend tonight. And I believe the Lord put on my heart uh, a simple but I hope powerful powerful teaching preaching however you want to put it on your notes tonight um, uh, to be able to communicate to you now, this is something I've I never spoke before never spoke before it's actually two messages that I've worked on and uh, when I was asked to come and share with you uh, and I was kind of searching I kind of married two sermons together Two shall become one. So that's what you're going to get here tonight. Is that all right? So I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 20. And um, go to verse 39. I'm going to read it to you out of the New King, King James Version. Uh, but 1 Kings chapter, chapter 20, verse 39 and 40. And um, then we'll get into it here today. Praise the Lord. When you get there, just someone say, I got it. Okay, I still, still hear a few pages turning. First Kings chapter 20, verse 39 and 40. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would just, uh, <clears throat> for the next few moments tonight, God, move in a powerful way, solidify everything that happened on this legacy weekend tonight. Uh, let it, let it not just be words, um, but I pray, Lord, that you would just help us to just um, kind of just marinate tonight on, on everything that happened. And uh, uh, whatever happens tonight, God, it would not just be uh, another note-taking night, but it would actually be a life-changing night for us, God, wherever we're at in our leadership. Whether we're a seasoned veteran or just coming up the ranks, however. But have your way tonight, God. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, now a king passed by, and he began to cry out, and he, and he said, your servant went out into the midst of the battle, and a man came over, and he brought a man to me, and he said, guard this man. Someone say, guard this man. Let's, let's turn that around tonight, and let's say, guard that leader. So if by any means he's missing when I come back, it's going to be your life for his life. Or else you'll pay a talent of silver. And then verse 40 says, while your servant was busy here and there, in other words, the king came back. He said, while your servant was busy here and there, the man was missing. I want to talk to you tonight just for a few moments on some very important principles, simple Simple, simple, simple things, but I feel that when you um, and I apply these simple principles to our, to our walk with God, um, man, they're, they're so everlasting. There are things that I've learned throughout the years uh, in, my, in, my, in my journey in, in the Lord um, that it's been the simple things that have made a big difference inside of my life. 
those simple things from day one when I went into the, when I, when I went into the recovery home, you know, the simplicity of, of a prayer life, the simplicity of a fasting life, the simplicity of being faithful and, and all, those, all those things that we say simple, but yet they're very powerful, powerful principles. In this scripture here today, I know it's only just a few verses that we read, but there is a whole lot going on in this story. What's going on is, is, is they're in the middle of a battle. There's a big battle going on. And, and, and in the Old Testament, the battles that uh, the commentaries say uh, were very loud and they were very noisy. And, and there would be trumpets coming from the mountains to the soldiers that were in the valley fighting. And, and, and the trumpets were, were to help guide the soldiers on where to move and where to maneuver and where to go. So as they were fighting in the middle of the battle, they would have to have an ear towards the trumpets because the trumpets would instruct them on how to fight. So if that wasn't loud and noisy enough for you, there would be the noise of the swords and the shields clanking together, hitting the ground, hitting horses, and, and just loud clanking and different stuff like that. So not only did you have the horns... But you also had the swords and the shields that were clanking and clanking and noise just began to increase and increase and increase. Stay with me now. And if that wasn't loud enough, you would have the, the screams and the, and the yells of men that were instructing each other on the battlefield in victory and some were even in defeat. So what, what, what the king was telling this man, he says, the battlefield is going to be noisy. It's going to be loud this weekend. Come on, somebody has been noisy and it's been loud and a lot of things have been happening. There's been a lot of victories that have been, you ain't hearing me today. There's been a lot of victories that have been happening this weekend. Come on, somebody. But now the king is pulling you off the battlefield tonight. He said, I need to come over here and, 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 and I'm pulling you off this battlefield. Tonight. I get excited. I'm sorry. I'm pulling you off the battlefield tonight. And I'm giving you just one thing to do. He's saying, I need you to guard this man. Tell your neighbor, guard this man. Or woman, you know what's up. The word, the word guard, the, the NIV says keep. Keep this man. It simply means to hedge in. To hedge in with thorns. To, to, to put parameters around. Make sure that this man doesn't escape. Make sure that this woman doesn't escape. Make sure that this leader doesn't escape. And, 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 and I'm taking you off the battlefield because the battlefield is noisy. Now I'm bringing you down in here. Now I need you to guard this leader. And if, and if that isn't enough pressure, come on somebody, to guard this man, the king tells him. He says, I'm coming back. And if this man is missing then it's going to be your life for his life. I'm going somewhere. So I'm pulling you off. Someone say he's pulling me off. Your responsibility in the midst of warfare, your responsibility in the midst of all this noise is to not get distracted because your very life depends on it. Because if you lose this leader, then you're going to lose yourself. We know the story. The king, the king came back and he's like, "What's up, dude?" So where's, where's the, the one thing I told you to do? You didn't do it. What happened? Did you get distracted? No, sir. Did you get seduced? No, sir. Did you get lazy? No, sir. What was his answer? The classic answer. How I many know we get some classic answers in the house of God? Classic. Classic answers. What did he say? He said, I got busy. Well, what would you get busy doing? I don't know. I got busy here. That's what he said. I got busy here. I got busy there. I decided to mow my lawn on Sunday morning. 
My daughter's on a soccer team now. I'm a little league coach now. I mean, I'm a, I'm a sky, I skydive now. I don't know since when Mexicans skydive, but they do now. I don't know. I, I just got busy here, and I got busy there. Classic answer. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you're here this evening, that, that, that the king is coming back someday. The king is coming back someday. And he's going to ask you, and he's going to ask me, where's that man? Where's that woman? Where's that leader? Did I not rescue you? Did I not raise you up? Did I not put a calling in your life? Did I not separate you? Did I not train you? You ain't hearing me tonight. I know it's, this, this, this is the dessert tonight. You got to be happy when the dessert is served to you here tonight. <laughs> dessert comes and dessert goes. If you miss, if you miss it, then you're going to have to go home and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on your own. And you don't want to go home and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on your own because it's being served here tonight. So the king is asking you tonight, where is that leader? I gave you one job, one thing to do. What happened? Ooh, Jesus. He said, because if you lose that leader, if you haven't figured it out, the leader is you. Did you figure that part out? You figured it out, right? I know. Okay, great. It's you. Someone say it's me. Don't lose that leader. So tonight I want to talk to you a few things that leaders cannot afford to lose. Because if you lose these things, you'll lose yourself. Number one thing you can't afford to lose is... Don't lose yourself. That's pretty cool, right? You were thinking something deep was coming. But if you think about it, that is deep. Because you would be surprised how many people lose their mind when they get a title. Oh, yeah. Get a little, get a, yeah, we're, we're going there, I guess, tonight. We're going there together. My first title I ever had was in the, in the recovery home. And I was the chore overseer. Oh, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. They gave me a, they gave me a clipboard. They anointed me with a clipboard. Let's see, here, you've been ordained. And all of a sudden, everyone started treating me different. And I'll admit, I'll, I'll admit, it got to my head. It got to my head. It got to me. Because now guys that didn't, didn't talk to me, all of a sudden were being nice to me. Because I had the clipboard. And I didn't really let that clipboard go after I felt the power of the clipboard. Yeah, I like, you know, I didn't hang it on the wall. I kept it with me. Because someone might snag my clipboard. So I had that clipboard everywhere I went, man. I had everyone's names on it. I had the roster. The home roster, I had it. I knew when you came in. I knew how long you were here. I knew your social security number. I had, I had it all. Yeah. I had it. I just power. It was power. Power came over me, man. Power. I had some power. And the title, the title began to get to me. Yeah. It got to me. Pastor Al, I was ear hustling in the, earlier on the, in the green room, and he was driving around in a Rolls Royce yesterday. He said, man, I had this Rolls Royce that I was driving around in, but I had nowhere to go. <laughs> so I had nowhere to go. So he started discovering places to go. He said he's driving down the street, and he's seen somebody with a charger. He said, boom, I put it, I, put, I kicked that thing, man. I, I, I drove up on him, and I was, like, behind him, boom, boom, like that. And then the charger guy got nervous, and he took, Pastor Al said he just took off. And then, and then he, he drove by another place where this guy has a Lamborghini. He said, I got to drive by there because this guy thinks he's all that with this Lamborghini. So now I need to s let him see me in a Rolls Royce. So he drove looking for this guy, and th the guy was there. And Pastor Al drove by, and he was like, you know, both flossing in front of him. And, uh, you know, 
And I started to think, I said, that's how some, some of us get with titles. <laughs> we, lose our, we lose our mind. But I'm here to tell you today, my friend, don't lose that leader in your title. Don't lose yourself in that title. I know titles are good, but the titles don't make you. Come on, somebody. Just be yourself. Someone say, just be yourself. Come on, be yourself. Say, be yourself. See, when you lead by title only, you'll lead like a dictator. You'll lead like a control freak. This style of leadership only results in negative outcomes. Someone say amen. amen. Leading by title undermines meaningful relationships. Leading by a title encourages ne negative political behavior. Leading by a title will crush the human spirit. Leading by a title frustrates creativity and innovation. Talk to me. Leading by a title erodes trust. Leading by a title produces mediocre results. Leading by a title feeds the ego. Leading by a title will destroy empathy for other people. Someone say, be yourself. Don't lose yourself in titles, young leader. You're gonna, I've got like five titles right now. Big deal. Big deal. Big. Wow. I mean, I'm not trying to minimize. I appreciate them. And I totally take the responsibility for them. But you understand what I'm saying, right? Like, they don't make me. I don't count on them. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It just gives me an opportunity and a privilege to be able to do something great for God. Tell your neighbor, don't lose yourself. Another thing you could lose yourself in is success. When a leader experiences success, it can be very dangerous. Another thing you can't lose yourself in is failures and difficulties. Mm -mm -mm. See, the difference between leaders of large organizations and leaders of smaller organizations isn't location isn't buildings, isn't vision, isn't the number of staff members, it e even isn't the talent of the organization. The leaders of larger organizations have just proven, listen carefully now, to have thicker skin. You got to have thick skin. See, we need leaders that don't quit every time they're going through things. In the book of Acts, we see explosive growth, overnight growth. And the believers in the book of Acts, they suffered incredible, incredible torture when you read commentaries and do the history from the Roman Empire. They were put on stakes and set on fire. They were torn into pieces and fed to wild animals. They were tortured with holes bored into their heads where they poured hot liquid into them. Oh, I broke my nail. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't go to church. Oh, my God, they, my, she hurt my feelings. When's the last time you had some hot lead poured into your head? They had thick skin, my friend. They had thick skin. They were able to go through difficulties. They were able to go through trials and tribulations. And they were able to fight through adversity. They, they had thick skin, and this thick skin... Uh, did something for them. It began to develop hope, faith, and love within their life. In, 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 in his book, Reaching for an Invisible God, Philip Yancey said this. He said, you and I need to have, and I hope I can pronounce this right, an ambidextrous faith. He said, we must hold God's blessings in our right hand and life's difficulties in our left hand. At the same time. Someone said at the same time. So you serve God in the good times. And you're able to serve God in the difficult times. You're able to serve God on the mountaintop breakthrough seasons within your life. And you're able to serve God. But not just serve God, but you're still able to lead with fervor and passion and fire and, 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 and resilience and, 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 you, and difficulties. And I'm, 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 I don't even know how to communicate it. I really don't even know how to say it tonight. 
But some only, only lead when, it's, when they're feeling good. Only are able to lead when all their ducks are in order. When they're not fighting with their old lady or they're not fighting with their old man. I'm trying. But, but today, someone say today. We need to be men and women that know how to lead with thick skin. If you're not bleeding, you ain't leading. <laughs> Altar call. Hashtag that one. If you're not bleeding, you ain't leading. If you're not wounded, come on, somebody. If you're going to have, that's what I'm talking about tonight. Thick skin. Showing up. Being here. Pastor Al told me 50% of leadership one time, he might have changed it now, but at least it was then. He said 50% of leadership is just show up. Just show up whether you're feeling it or you're not feeling it. Well, you're tired or you're not tired. Drink some coffee. Drink some soda. Drink a, I don't know, a five-hour. But you keep fighting with thick skin. You keep showing up. You keep leading. Real quick, three things that cause thick skin. External challenges. What do I mean by that? See, success is not measured by what you accomplish, but it's, it's, it's measured by the opposition you have encountered. You ain't hearing me tonight. See, some causes for external challenges are criticism. Come on, somebody. It's human nature for people to try to build themselves up before putting others down. Ministry leaders are very visible. They're accessible and they're vulnerable targets. Come on, somebody. So you're going to get criticized. You're probably being criticized tonight for being here. There you go again. Where are you going now? You going to church again? Yeah. I'm guarding that man. I'm guarding that leader. I know it doesn't make sense to you, but I have a responsibility to guard that man. I got to thorn him in sometimes. I got to keep him in with everything I got because it doesn't, it, you don't guard that man or you don't guard that leader. You don't guard that calling. Let's just say, put it like that tonight. I'm guarding that calling tonight. That's what I'm doing here tonight. Yeah, my flesh. Yeah. My, yeah, 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 but yeah, I need to get over there, watch my kid one more night, get in the car one more night, because I'm guarding my calling, my calling is important to me, see, criticism, they're always going to criticize you. They'll criticize you for not caring for those that are hurting. If you're devoted, if you're devoted to those who are who are, if you're, if you're devoted to those who are sick, and make hospital calls. They'll criticize you for not being in the office enough. If you're not, <laughs> if your gifts are administrative, they'll criticize you for this. They'll criticize you for that. No matter what your gift and your style may be, they're always going to criticize you for what you're not. Another external way that God builds thick skin is betrayal. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to get into that much, but you know what's up. If you lead long enough, let me just say this. If you lead long enough, you're going to have to endure this deep wound of betrayal. Not everybody's going to be for you. That's why you got to have thick skin. Love. Most people are grateful, but few. Come on, somebody. But few. It only takes a few sometimes to come against you. When those we trusted turn their backs on us, refuse to support you at a time of need, and even withhold love when you need it the most, come on, somebody. That'll grow some thick skin in you. Are there any thick skin leaders in the house tonight? So there's 
external, there's some internal things that God uses to build internal things. There's growing pains, paying the price of leadership. Most people assume that growth will relieve stress, but it actually increases stress. And then there's another thing that we can't lose. One of them was yourself. Number two thing you can't is you can't lose yourself in wrong relationships as a leader. It's just thinking about uh, a story in the Bible, Second Chronicles chapter 17 through 20. It's a, it's a story of the life of a guy named Jehoshaphat. And, and Jehoshaphat like many of us here tonight, started off great. I mean, this guy was the poster boy of righteousness and holiness and uprightness and uh, a guy that, that God used to get, to get Israel back in shape. He was a guy that God used to uh, bring the word of God back into Israel, the, the teachings of the scriptures, the, the, he just, to remove idols from Israel and to just do all these great things. He, if there was anybody that was the poster child as a leader, it was, it was Jehoshaphat. And, and, and he started off good. Come on, somebody. He, he, he came to the family life flow. He was there, man. He had his notepad. He even went out to the 99 cent store and bought, uh, bought his own little notepad. <laughs> and bought all five highlighters for 99 cents. They even, they even sell energy drinks there. He even got one of those snags. He goes, man, I can afford this now. Boom, he grabbed the, I don't know what they call them. They got a weird name for them over there at the 99 cent store. What are they? Spiders. Spiders? Is that a thing? It's real? Got a spider. Got bit by the spider. Came to Sunday night, and he was doing good. But one thing he didn't guard he didn't guard his relationships. And he started hanging out with the wrong dude. He started hanging out with the wrong leader. He started hanging out with the wrong church folk. And he started hanging out with the wrong person. And the Bible says he became friends with Ahab. Jezebel's boo. Somehow, somewhere, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. Ahab, on the other hand, was smart. Because he knew that Jehoshaphat's army could take him out at any time. So he figured the way I'm going to get to him was I got to get in with him. So, so, so pretty soon, Ahab's son, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, married Ahab's daughter. And that was the first mistake. When you start fellowshipping with the wrong, and you start letting the wrong people pour into your life, and you start taking advice from fleshly people, and you start taking advice from those that are not so faithful, Talk to me here because you know what happens. I don't care. It could happen to anybody. It could happen to anybody, my friend. You could start off good. But if you don't guard this area in your life, relationships, the relationships will take you out. And before you know it, you start fellowshipping with Ahab. Start kicking it with Ahab. Started eating California burritos with Ahab. Started, started going to Tijuana with Ahab. <laughs> started eating carne all the fries with Ahab. Got into a deal with Ahab. Made a, shook his hand and said, I'm going to fight this battle with you. And, and, and he knew it was wrong. Jehoshaphat, get ready to, we're turning the corner now. We're going to come in for a landing in a minute, but just stay with me. Wrong relationships. Because if you don't guard this area of your life as a leader... Then eventually the king is coming back and he's going to ask you, where's that man? You're going to say, oh, he took off with Ahab. And he made a deal, shook his hand, and, and, and Jehoshaphat knew in his heart of hearts that it was a wrong deal. But he, he felt bad because he had promised him he was going to fight with him. And it almost took out his life. All because he began to fellowship with the wrong person. Crazy, right? I think that's important for us here tonight. Young leaders, up-and-coming leaders, 
no matter where you're at in your leadership, it's important that you guard those relationships. There, there is just some, you know, you don't have to be cold about it. Some you might have to be. But you just got to be smooth about it. Listen, I got homeboys back in my neighborhood that are hurting. They're still, they're still out there. But my wife will tell you, I'm not hanging out with them. And I'll show up, and I run into them all the time. I don't need to be at the, in the garage. Because I know what they're doing. They're doing the same thing they were doing 20 years ago. 40, 50-year-old men. You know what they're doing? Rolling dice. Seven. Nina's. Snake eyes. I know that, but I'm not praying for them. Even people in the church house. There's some, come on somebody, you're on a mission now. You're at, someone say, I'm on a mission. It's getting quiet in here. I'm going to end. I want, we're on a mission. You're on a mission. You're here tonight. And it's important that you grab a hold. Don't lose yourself in the wrong relationships. And eventually, we know. We know what happened to Ahab. Ahab, not only did he mess himself up. I'll have the piano player come up. Not only did he mess himself up. Not only did he mess himself up. But if you read it. It, it messed up his children. It messed up his grandchildren. Generation, the Bible says, after generation, after generation, after generation was tainted. All because he didn't guard this man. Another thing we can't lose here tonight in this journey on our leadership is we cannot lose our gratefulness. Simple, I told you. Don't lose yourself. Don't get caught in the wrong relationships. But also, don't lose your gratefulness. First time they asked you to lead. Remember that? The first time they asked you, hey, can you can you help out? Can you oversee this? Can you come to the leaders meeting? Remember that that little feeling you got inside that was that was like me? Me? Yeah. Pastor pastor asked or brother so and so asked or Sister so-and-so asked if you would come be a part of this. And then something inside. Some were bigger tasks. I'm talking about that small task at first. That little thing at first. When you were like, oh, man. Yes. Yes. And then this party says, what are you doing, dummy? No. Then the flesh kicked in. No. And then something inside, deep inside of you, that tugging, the call, the the Holy Spirit, the confirmation. Because you know that everything that you've been through, all the altar calls that you made, all the stuff that you've been through, was finally, finally something was happening within your life. And you just, yes. And then it was such a joy. Trying to remind you a little bit, trying to, like that, that joy and then that, that, that gratitude came in and, and it was just, it was like a, I don't know, like something happened to you, it sparked up in your life. But if we're not careful, as time goes on, you can lose yourself. And the king is coming tonight and he's asking you, where's that leader? Right now, he's walking around some of these tables. He's looking at you eyeball to eyeball. And he's asking you, 
Where's that leader? I told you I was coming back. Where's that leader? Where's that joy? Where's that heart of gratitude? What happened? And then you say, I don't, I don't know what. He was just here a minute ago. But I just got busy. I got busy doing this. Then I got busy doing that. And it doesn't happen overnight, but then you begin to, some of us have drifted. Physically, we're here. Physically, we are here. Yes. Yes, you are attended for. Yes, you are present. Physically. But is your heart here? Is your heart really here? Is your, is your mind totally here? Is your spirit re really here? Is, are you still here? Little by little. I've been there, man. That's why this message, I've been there. I lost my mind, to be honest with you. I lost, yeah, man. They gave me a title. What did Pastor Chris say? Regional pastor in 2011. It was a crazy year for me, man. And it's good, you know? Like, yeah, 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 cool. Regional pastor, and then I met, I met my wife in 2011. So somebody said, "You got a region and a rib." <laughs> <laughs> you went from rags to riches, brother. You scored. And on the outside, but I'll tell you what, it got to my head. I'll be, can I? Yeah, it, it really did. Yeah, man. And I know I, I'm, I'm a humble man, I'm this cool guy. But I'll be honest, it, it, it got to me. Going to some churches, man, I was like, found myself, like expecting parking space. Expecting certain things. Expecting certain food. Yeah, it's weird, right? It sounds weird now when I say it out loud, but <laughs> I'm being totally honest. I'm being totally honest right now. It, it, certain stuff, man, and and I got I drifted away. I, I just drifted away, man. I don't know how or when it happened. But it wasn't anybody that had to confront me. But it was, it was the Holy Spirit that had to check me. And that, that's why this, he said, where, where, where's Anthony? So I told you to guard him. I gave you one job to do. I took you off the battlefield tonight. I brought you away from the noise tonight. I took you out of your church. I took you away from all your responsibility. I, I worked it all out for you to be here tonight to ask you one question. Where is that leader? Oh, man. Tonight, some of us need to get them back. Some of us need to get them back. And the way we're going to solidify this weekend tonight is we're going to have a little bit of prayer. We're going to have a little bit of prayer. Uh, want to really marinate our hearts and our spirits. Everything that happened from Friday night, Saturday morning, this morning, and even tonight, just a little cherry on top for you. <laughs> you know why? Because you're going to get, you're, some of us are getting back that man tonight. Can we play something? Can we? What are we going to do? They got it, Marky? Just, just play. Just play.
close your eyes right where you're at. Just we're gonna we're gonna do something in a minute, but so right, it's 8:15. Right. The Lord is asking you, where's that leader? Did you lose him? Did you get caught up in the noise? Did you get caught up in the battle? Did he drift away? Where is she? Where is he? Did he get lost in the, in the lights and the glamour? Did he get lost when you got that title? Did you lose him when you hooked up and linked up with some wrong people? Or maybe tonight you just got plain ungrateful. You've been walking in a spirit of ungratefulness. But tonight, I said tonight, the Lord wanted me to tell you that it's not by might, that it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. That you're going to get them back. Where is that man? Did you lose them? Lift up those hands. Listen, there's going to be a refreshing. The Lord told me there's going to be a refreshing. He's going to breathe tonight. Physically, physically, you're drained. Physically, physically, you're right where you're. Any human being that has been through this weekend in their own flesh is going to be tired. So tonight God is saying, I'm going to do something supernatural on this campus flow tonight that you didn't see coming. That you didn't, that you didn't, you didn't. But I'm about to breathe some refreshing on you here this evening because you've chosen to come tonight to guard that man. And there's always a blessing. See, the curse is, is when you don't watch that man, he says, now I'm going to take your life for his life. In other words, you're going you're gonna to die. But tonight, the king has come back. And the man was right where he was supposed to be. He said, yeah, he's right here. He tried to get away a few times. I, I drifted away, but not too far. And I, I came back. And there he was. He's still here. Not by might. Come on, sing it. Guard that leader. Keep that leader with everything you got. Everything you got. What we're going to do here tonight is this, and I know there's limited room here because of tables, but I really feel in my heart that for the next five minutes, we're going to turn it into a little prayer meeting, yeah? And all this is, is I want you to pray for yourself. No one can pray for you like you can pray for you. It's not selfish. It's actually your life is depending on it. You're going to pray a prayer of, 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 of refreshing you're going to pray a prayer of a supernatural, I just see the Lord breathing like an eagle, soaring. Like eagles don't stay in the, so in the storm because they can fly higher than the storm. So tonight, they're going to play and they're going to play powerful. They're going to sing powerful. If you could come up here, if not, you could pray at your chair. But just for a few moments, guys, it's going to be a prayer meeting. Come on. Come on, come on up.